Hi, I'm Martin and I'm a linguist. Now I know this sounds a little bit like the beginning of an AA meeting, but I've been asked to tell you about how to use argumentation theory in real life. I know what you're thinking. Linguistics isn't exactly the most applicable or practical field you could be in. But there are people like me who do forensic linguistics. When there are uh, disputes in courts of law where language plays a central role, they turn to me. And what I focus on is arguments about the meaning of language. So if there's a law or a contract and opposing sides cannot agree what it means, they turn to me. And the judge expects me to explain what the possible interpretations are, whether there are any ambiguities or anything else that he should be wary of. And there's a case that I recently had where you can very clearly see how the proper use of arguments is important. A farmer had his very equipment, farming equipment, stolen. It was worth several million euros. And being a careful man, he had insured it against theft. But the insurance company, like in a Hollywood movie, came back to him and said, but you didn't read the fine print. What we say, uh, said there, and which you agreed to, was that theft or stealing is only such if it happens from a guarded area. Let's look at the sentence in Estonian here. So, Varguseks loetakse varkust valvatavalt territoriumilt. With that little sentence, what they said was that stealing is stealing from a guarded territory, where, because of the way that the Estonian language works, a lot of the meaning was packed into the word Valvatavalt. As a linguist, I immediately thought that this might be a linchpin for their argument. As with every analysis, you need to take, it, uh, take the argument down to its parts and see how it combines. This word Valvatavalt has two suffixes, the tav suffix and the alt suffix. The alt suffix is quite innocuous. It just means what uh, from means in English. But the tav suffix has several me meanings in the Estonian language. On the one hand, it has the meaning that the insurance company was looking for, that there is someone guarding. It's a guarded territory. But there's a second one as well, an ambiguity, which says it's a, a territory that can be guarded. It's epistemically possible. And now this the insurance company didn't like one bit, because almost any territory can be guarded unless it's an area where all human life immediately ceases and surveillance drones fall to the ground, it is possible to guard areas. And such their very convincing argument fell apart. So hopefully with this little anecdote, I've shown you that a superficially impractical field, such as linguistics, can be applied to real life problems and help people. And hopefully you can also now take a quick look at your own studies, which might seem very theoretical at the moment, but which might have very interesting applications in the future. Thank you very much for listening and good luck.